Ok, good morning from CatLab 5, uh, here at the Polyclinico Hospital of Catania, uh, Davide Capodanno and Alessio Lamanna. So we have uh, today the case of a patient who was treated with primary PCI on the right coronary artery one month earlier, but uh, this was in the context of multivessel disease. So of course uh, we want to give this patient uh, a full uh, functional revascularization and we thought that uh, using uh, physiology in this case could be quite appropriate. So there is... Uh as you said, the diffuse disease of the LAD with the multiple stenosis. So in this case, it's very important to assess which lesions need to be treated in order to reduce the ischemic burden. And I have to say that uh, if I follow my oculo stenotic reflex, the temptation would be to put the really many stents in the mid and uh, distal part of the LAD. This patient has 35% of left ventricular ejection fraction, so we need to ensure that the blood uh, supply is adequate. So now we are ready to make the, our measurement. So we can first uh, measure the distal uh, IFR. Okay. Okay, let's record the distal IFR now. Okay, the value yeah. is at 0 0.81, so significant. So I pull back the recording now. Yes. Okay, so ready. So okay, so now I start to pull the wire back very slowly. So we expect here to have uh, a diffuse disease pattern plus some focal stenosis probably. Yeah, I must say that uh, when I look at the blue curve, it's rising uh, quite uh, steadily. So this uh, speaks in favor of diffuse disease rather than focal. But uh, let's see whether we have a jump. Now we are at the level of the stent and we have uh, that lesion at the proximal edge. Okay, done. And still uh, an increase uh, in the value. Okay, you can stop now the recording. Okay. okay perfect. Okay, so we what we see now is basically uh, each yellow dot corresponds to a drop in IFR of 001. So if you see clustering of these dots, this means uh, that uh, that lesion is uh, particularly relevant. Uh, if you see multiple dots along all the entire vessel, this means that, that there is a diffuse disease. And apparently we have both situations here. Yeah, as we expected. But uh, my interpretation of this figure is that uh, the lesion in the mid portion is playing uh, a role. And we can uh, measure also the length of the segment that has to be treated and uh, virtually imagine what uh, will be the change in IFR if we stent that area. So, of course, in the context of uh, such a small vessels, uh, you never know whether you want to place a stent or you want to just balloon or use a drug-coated balloon. So, perhaps one strategy is that first we dilate the vessel and then uh, yeah. we, we decide uh, based on which size we, we achieve. So, now, in order to use the same wire for the PCI, we have to, of course, unlock the system. That is very easy. Just let it slide uh, this door and then it's ready to be used. So it's very easy to disengage and to engage again. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice to use the stent enhancement tool from the Sync Vision system because in particular when you have to do overlapping, it's very, it's very nice to avoid the need for extra radiations in order to assess the position right. of the stents. Okay, Alessio, two stents have been implanted, quite shorter than uh, I would have done without yeah. physiology. Yeah. That's pretty sure. So now we have to reassess uh, the physiology because we have the wire on the table and I think it would be interesting to see whether that prediction is also realized. Yeah. Indeed, there is a residual stenosis on the, at the distal edge of the stent. So let's go for pullback. It seems that we have also some uh, area of uh, 
residual stenosis in the stent. Yeah. So perhaps uh, going with a non-compliant balloon there would be helpful. And uh, yes, it seems that another stent in the proximal part could also uh, mm. create some benefit in terms of uh, IFR. And I agree with you that I would not place a stent distally because, of course, uh, we don't want to jeopardize the safety of the procedure. This is a very small vessel, so prone to rupture if uh, we oversize. So we can post dilate the stent? That's an option, and apparently if we post dilate, uh, we can gain uh, three or four points of uh, IFR, which is basically what we need. Uh. Okay. Okay. So okay. it seems you are perfectly placed, so I dilate this non-compliant 2.5 balloon and uh, okay, so now we connect again and we see yeah. whether this uh, expansion of the 2.25 uh, has uh, provoked some benefit. Oh, great. Okay, so it seems that uh, all the efforts have been paid. Uh, it's yeah. at 0.92, so we are uh, definitely fine with that. And it seems that the post-dilatation of the stents was really the trigger there. So we avoid the temptation to put another stent, and I'm happy with that. Yeah.